Hi everyone. This structure here is an alkaloid known as mesembrine, and I thought it might be a good target for a quick retrosynthesis. As ever, we should start by labeling functional groups. We've got a ketone here on the left, an amine on the right. I just want to highlight some other features too. I have a 6-5 cis ring fusion. Now that is actually the thermodynamically most stable ring fusion for those ring sizes. So that should keep things nice and simple for us. Just in the center there, there's a quaternary carbon center, and it's actually a stereo center here too. That can sometimes be something a bit fiddly to set up as it restricts the type of chemistry we can use. And up the top, we've got a benzene. So just having a think about where disconnections could go. A disconnection approach normally tells us to go for branch points, particularly between rings. So perhaps this bond just by the benzene ring. I don't think this is a good way forwards though. There's no nearby useful functional groups if we disconnect there. So perhaps we could have a think about cutting near one of the functional groups. A thing that jumps out to me here is the CN bond. And that's because I could probably disconnect back to this amine. That would be nicely set up for an intramolecular Michael addition. It would even give the correct stereochemistry because the nucleophile is being held on the bottom face. But I'm not particularly satisfied with this one. This hasn't made good progress. It's not really simplified the problem. Now, another key trick in retrosynthesis is to identify, well, we've actually got like two useful functional groups. We've got the ketone and the amine. So we should have a look at what the functional group relationship is between them, how many carbons they're separated by. And here we can see that that's one, two, three. So we have a one, three difunctionalized compounds. And for me, that's a trigger for using enolates. And I think this is a good way forwards. I'm just gonna take out some of those other annotations and I'll focus on our functional group relationship. So a good disconnection is to notionally push these fragmentation arrows. So going backwards, that would just be a manic reaction. That's when you get an enolate attacking an aminium ion or an imine. I can also note that the enolate is being held on the bottom face, it, which is good because that means when the enolate attacks, it will come from below on the aminium ion and push that hydrogen up, which is the stereochemistry in the product. Okay, so where do we go from here? Well, I'd need to make my enolate from the ketone. So I can just automorize this structure to have a think about what I really need to make, which is this methyl ketone. And again, we've got two functional groups there, so we should count the number of carbons between them. And in this case, we have a 1-5 relationship between the two functional groups. Now that's a trigger for me to do conjugate addition, an alpha-beta unsaturated carbonyl-like species. We identified that there was a branch point before, so it makes a lot of sense to do the disconnection here between atoms three and four. To take me back to methyl vinyl ketone, normally just called MVK, which is cheap and readily available. And also a component that must look something like this. So I need a nucleophile at carbon four because I could just use the enamine here. Enamines are great soft nucleophiles. So we've got the correct pairing of reactivity here where the soft nucleophile is reacting with the soft end of the electrophile. So with this enamine, the thing that I'll note is that this position with the star is all carbon. So that's making me think about carbon-based nucleophiles. We've also got an alkene, and that's got me thinking about standard ways of making alkenes. So that CC bond has really got me thinking about eliminations. So I'm going to give that a go. As my disconnection, I'm going to hydrate across that double bond, which of course gives me two options, but I'm going to add water in this sort of way, because if I do so, that will give me a tertiary alcohol. There's not an awful lot of ways of making tertiary alcohols, but a really easy way of making them is to use Grignard reagents. So this allows me to chop the molecule into two halves quite quickly, just across there. This will take me back to this N-methylated 3-pyrrolidone. The numbering of those ring systems takes nitrogen as the priority. And also this Grignard. So the Grignard itself is super easy to make. We just make it from the bromide, and then we can make the bromide just using standard aromatic chemistry. So I'm just going to do a couple of steps here that will take me back to 1,2-dimethoxybenzene, which is cheap. And then to go backwards, well, I could use some standard aromatic bromination chemistry, so using bromine and iron bromide. That will put on a bromine para to one of the electron donating groups. We should be able to control that to just do a mono addition, and the symmetry means we'll get the correct product. And then two, I just chuck in some magnesium to make my Grignard reagent. Now this pyrrolidinone looks pretty innocent, but there's lots of scope for us to fall into traps here. So I'll just highlight what some of them might be. So we'd probably be thinking, well, maybe I should disconnect next to the CN bond. One of those two should do. Then I can do an intramolecular cyclization. So I'll just label those bonds one and two. 
If I disconnect via bond one, I'll end up needing something like this with say a leaving group and an amine. Or I could do a similar thing if I disconnect the CN bond at position two. That would just put the chlorine in a different place. Now these look fine if you start with. They're both five exotet, so Baldwin's will say they're okay cyclizations. But now we can see we've got two very functionalized molecules that are very small. So then the problem becomes how do we make these in the first place? And perhaps we'll look at the first route and disconnect here and try and do a Michael addition, which is a perfectly reasonable disconnection until we realize that this amine can attack in all sorts of different places. So how would we stop the amine attacking here, here, or potentially even onto the carbonyl? We're likely to just get a mixture of all sorts of things. Same goes for trying to make the multifunctionalized compound from route two. Just draw your attention to this hydrogen. There is a big elimination risk when you try to make this compound, particularly if you've got some basic things nearby. So you'd actually have to take quite a bit of care not to make this alpha beta unsaturated carbon alt instead. And although this cyclization looks okay, it's actually not. We won't observe this. We're more likely to get an intermolecular reaction than an intramolecular reaction. Baldwin's rules identify this as a five endo trig cyclization. And basically the homo and the lumo just can't reach. All four of those highlighted carbons there must be coplanar. So there's just not enough rotational degrees of freedom here to be able to get that nitrogen lone pair into the pi star at that beta carbon, which is perpendicular to that plane drawn in yellow. Just going back to the original pyrrolidinone, another thing we can do is count the functional group relationships. That serves us well earlier in this video. There's a one, two relationship if I count this way. Now one, two disconnections, they're a trigger for epoxides. So we could maybe have a think about what happens there if we do an FGI to take us back to the alcohol. Perhaps we have a way around this by doing an intramolecular ring opening using an epoxide to take me back to this. And the epoxide itself coming from the alkene, just using MCPBA or something. But I'm a little bit worried here. This cyclization, although it's formerly a 5 exotet, I think it's a bit questionable how easy that nitrogen can reach the sigma star it needs to, which will of course be pointing in that sort of direction. If that intramolecular reaction isn't so good, the intermolecular reaction is a big concern and we could end up with polymers and a right mess. Now to get us out of this hole, I'm going to do a different functional group into conversion, which is perhaps less obvious in that I've explored all my options for trying to break a CN bond. The carbon heteroatom bond is the usual strategy, but in this case, it's actually easier to make a carbon carbon bond instead. What I'm going to do is add a functional group and make a beta keto ester. This opens up a whole new avenue for how I can disconnect this. And to go backwards, I could just do a decarboxylation. Okay, now I've got this one. I've got a one free difunctionalized compound again, so I should be using enolates. And I can head straight back to this. And that's because going backwards, I can do what's called a Dijkman condensation. That's where I can enolize. I'm just going to represent that with a negative charge here and do an intramolecular condensation like this. At this point, I think I'm home and dry. I can now cut that CN bond quite easily to take me back to this ester and also this alpha beta unsaturated ester. Now both of these are available. Right, so my retrosynthesis took a bit of a ramble there. I'm just going to tie it all together by discussing the forward synthesis. So my super cheap starting material is going to be this amine here. This is known as sarcosine, and it's just a byproduct of metabolism. I guess if you hadn't come across this one before, you could always do a one, two disconnection on that to take you back to an epoxide and methyl amine and do a little bit of redox chemistry. Firstly, we need to make this the ester. Standard easy conditions for that would be to use thionyl chloride and then ethanol. That will save me having to carry around a carboxylic acid. They're often a real pain. Next, I'd like my amine to do conjugate addition. So I'll just give it this ethyl acrylate. And we just need to put this under thermodynamic control to make it favor the one, four addition. I think this is pretty favorable here because that terminal site is really unhindered. An unfavorable 1,2 addition might lead to an amide. I'm pretty certain we'd be okay here, but we could just swap the ethyl ester to a T-butyl ester if we were really having trouble with this. That would prevent the option of direct attack entirely. Next, I should do the Dijkman condensation. Sodium methoxide will work here. I'll just note that there's a couple of enolizable sites here. I think the one on the right is more reactive. As in, if we form the enolate there, it will be more reactive to attack the carbonyl. I'll just add some numbers to the structure. So forming the enolate at position two and condensing onto carbon six will give us the product from our retrosynthesis, which I think will be the dominant reaction under these conditions. 
we should have a quick look at what happens if you form the enolate at carbon five as well, and then react it onto position one. That will give me this isomeric product. But actually, in this case, we really don't need to worry about this. The next step in the forward synthesis would be to do a decarboxylation reaction. Just some old school conditions for that would be to treat it with sodium hydroxide to hydrolyze the ester to the acid, and then treat it with HCl and heat it up. This would be the standard decarboxylation mechanism that looks like this for beta keto acids. If we do that decarboxylation, we actually get the same product regardless of the isomer that we make in the previous step. So we shouldn't put any effort into separating off minor products, for example. We might as well just barrel through with the mixture if we get it. Right then, at this stage, this is where we needed the Grignard reagent, which we can just make from bromination of this benzene ring, followed by magnesium metal. Adding these two together will give me this alcohol, and that should be super easy just to dehydrate with acid. This is a really good setup for an E1 type elimination. A carbocation there would be stabilized by the oxygen lone pairs. Okay, final bit. I put in my methyl vinyl ketone to do the Michael addition. Now here we're gonna form an aminium ion, which itself is a good electrophile. I'll just draw the product of the first step. I'm just gonna abbreviate that benzene as AR for clarity. The addition product will of course be racemic here because I'm not controlling any facial selectivity. We'd have to address that if we wanted to do an enantioselective synthesis, but that sort of thing is for another video. What I've just drawn here is the direct intermediate that we get from conjugate addition. And what we can notice is actually we've got an enolate in the presence of an electrophile, but we don't actually form a ring here because the nucleophile and the electrophile are only four carbons apart. That would be quite a strained ring and the angles just aren't right for this system. Now that's okay, we could take this slow and do a workup and make the methyl ketone, but also probably this hemiaminal. That's where waters attack the aminium ion in the workup. We can then just go to the product using acid. That would just be revealing the aminium ion again and also forming the enol. Nothing wrong with this as an idea, but I do wonder if we can circumvent that by having a reversible base in here. What I'm noticing is that the quaternary center can help us. The aminium ion can't tautomerize to anything else. It's stuck as the aminium ion. So the only thing that can tautomerize would be the enolate to give the methyl ketone, which then itself can tautomerize by losing this proton. And then we're just directly at the product. I guess you need to try this out in the lab to see whether there's a benefit for one or the other, maybe on the yield side of things. But either way, I think the synthesis plan will work. If you enjoyed the discussion, please do give me your thoughts in the comments below. Perhaps give the video a like and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. This is part of a playlist of retrosynthesis videos on my channel, which is just linked on the screen now.